Okay. It you should always be kept in the container, clearly labeled. All right. And at the end of the day's shooting, this will go back into it. Two reasons. That is not airtight. It will absorb the moisture from the air. Yeah. Quite readily. And damp powder, as we all know from way back, is is totally useless. It's, it's dangerous because it's not going to go bang properly. It's going to cause all sorts of. So it goes back in here, clearly marked. Okay. Right. The other reason we do this is to make the RCO's job easier. Everybody knows the drill. <laughs> Everybody knows what's expected of them and from them, and they conform to that. Right, the black powder itself. Um, we are lumbered, if you can say that, with an American system for identifying black powder. It uses the number of F's, all right, for grains of fineness. The more F's, the finer the powder. So basically, a 4FG, FFG. So it's F dangerous. It, well, it's, it's, it's almost like dust, okay? <laughs> All you will use that for, really, is priming flintlocks. It is dust, basically, okay? The next one is 3FG, which, as a rule of thumb, you use for up to 44, 45 caliber, that sort of thing. What was that? 3FG. So when you go into the shop for these pistols here, you ask for 3FG powder. If they look at you like that, say, for a cap and ball pistol, Okay. okay. What about Pyrodex? Please? Yes, you can use Pyrodex. Uh, I'm not totally familiar with Pyrodex. I did use it out in the States, but everything I learned I've probably forgotten. There are people in the club who use Pyrodex. It is not as corrosive. It doesn't create so much fouling. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it bulks up the same oh, as yes. black powder. Yeah. So that if you have a, a 20 grain neck, yeah. then you, yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, that's fine, you know, I mean, you can use that if you want. I prefer to use the real thing. It does still clog up the board. Oh, just yes, as much yes. As it really it does. Just yeah. And the thing is, you don't need, you don't need this case of, it's not, it bulks up more, it doesn't. You need just as much, in fact, a little bit more. Ah, you because you get a hang, you get some of you, more of a hang it's spar a light, with it. You, f you pull the trigger and then it goes bang. Yeah. Unlike the black bag, it goes bang. It was volume for volume, it's yeah. a bit lighter. Yeah. I'll have yeah. a discussion afterwards, please. Anyway, I want to yeah. get through this. Yeah, go on. Right, so what you'll be using here for these revolvers is 3FG, okay? I'll go through the others. 2FG is, is coarser grained again, and that is used <coughs> for muskets and rifles above, say, 45, 50 caliber, that sort of thing that you'll get. And 1FG is like lumps of charcoal, it's huge porcelain. They use that in cannons. Like cannon, yeah. yeah, right, okay. <laughs> so just be aware of that system uh, that you don't go into a shop and ask for black powder. No. Because you'll get. So if you're going to. Nine times out of ten. It'll be a 3FG. 3FG, okay. Um, if you've got, uh, like some of them are going to get, um, uh, like uh, Jim, Jim Shaw's got a, a 450 577. Um, Martini, he uses, he gets away with 3FG, because it is 45 caliber, okay, but if you went up to a 577, you would be needing 2FG, okay. Right, again, this will go off with a spark, so I'll keep it. Like off with compression as well, that's yes. the kind of thing I'm thinking, yeah. rather than yeah. balling. Like, could that, you that, no, 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 not with the lead. Not with no. the lead, no. As I say, we emphasize, keep it away from the lights, heat and whatever. If it does get damp, you can dry it. But don't dry it in front of a naked flat right. flat right. right. Okay. Put it out on a tray yeah. and, and, and yeah. yeah. Whatever. Keep the cat. <laughs> okay. Right. Now then. There's paradox or moose. Follow the range. Well um you've got to test with the parrot in the flask. Now normally the flowers are cold, yeah. This is a flask. It basically it's it's just a, a a flask with a, yep, with yep. a, a gap with a across on against the spring. I've had nine to get a little bit tight because then it will stay open. Ah. Okay. Now no, 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 normally no, no, no. they spring yeah, close. Spring now it is it is preferable though. for it to spring back for obvious reasons. But there's two ways of loading this with powder. One you can get a minute screwdriver and take this off. Oh. Don't. Believe me, you lose the grub screws, it's it's horrendous. Okay. So to load it, plastic again, you see this? No still plastic. <coughs> Final end. Hold that. Mr. Atkin. 
Yeah, that's all right. I've got that's, the wrong. that's a proper Oh, that's a pocket one. Fred is working. Oh, I like a big one. Now, gather yeah, around I'm you. I'm spinning around. Gather around because I'm going to be free flying this. No sign of caking. See how it goes down? That's what you want to see. If there's any sign of caking or anything like that, it's damp and it's no good. Get rid of it. Okay. Fill your flask up fairly well. Let it bulk up. It helps the loading process. Okay, you can tap it a little bit. Don't lose the funnel at the top, otherwise we'll have black powder all over. No, it. don't you stay with your friend. Okay. okay, nice and free flowing. You with me on that one? So, how much do these flasks usually hold? About half a tin, about half a pound, something like that. Right, that'll do for that. That's okay. Let's put the lid on it quick because it is a bit damp. Spring Right, over. that will close, and once it closed, that's okay. You're safe. You can do that. For me. Now, the neck is quite important. That gives you your measure okay mm. because once that's screwed on there you put your finger over open that shake down the neck full close, close that and then you've got a neck full of parano which you can tip in the mm. that measurement is critical if you this takes about 20 grains the old army 20, 20 grains of powder i'll show you in a minute you screw that down without opening it or you have to open it no open no it no down. you screw that down now i can put this back now it's finished with but i was just explaining no. right. never guesstimate the load okay if you need a bigger load say 25 grains buy a 25 grain neck okay pay attention people otherwise you won't get your chips at the end i'm listening right okay then that is the actual black powder itself okay right okay now the law of black powder be aware that you do need a tit to acquire and keep black powder okay that's uh, explosives form number one, which is obtainable at any uh, police station. It's no good applying for a chip to get black powder until you have a black powder firearm on your ticket, okay? Once it's on your ticket, you're authorized to buy it, then you can get it. You'll get the form, fill it in, and you'll get back uh, an, a, a bit of paper that looks like a firearm certificate thing, that same size, okay? You like see one? Once you've got, I've got one in there, that's all. Once you've got that, you apply to the European Union for a permit to transport it. Okay, but that comes like I just want you to be aware at the moment that you do need a chip to acquire and to keep. And does that apply to powder? No, no. Black powder is classed as a blasting powder, and it comes under different regulations from nitro propellants, which uh, think which is powder. Thirty pound. Yeah. They get it very well as people don't blow the hairs of the I'm not, <laughs> not going to demonstrate this, but I could put some black powder on there, stick a match to it, and it will do like we've all pulled a tooth around, it will go with a big bloody heap of smoke, which is a big difference. So be aware that grains of black powder around will flare. It's only when they're contained that they become. Okay? Now, then, always use wood or brass or plastic tools when dealing with. Sorry. Is there any criteria to meet when you apply for this certificate? To acquire and keep black yeah. powder? Yeah, you must have a black powder firearm on your ticket. Is that all? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then you have reason to acquire it. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you, could, you, you couldn't acquire, you couldn't ask for one if you don't have a black You're powder firearm. You're not open to another visit and stuff like that. Well, well, maybe. Story, yes. Could well be. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, I shall give you a copy of a letter from Hampshire Constabulary. I wrote to them asking for guidance on storage. Yeah. And I got a letter back. Oh, which I is think totally I've heard that one. which is totally vague. You will have done it if you've had In a wooden box and stuff like it's, that. It's all vague. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, use wood, brass or plastic tools when dealing with black powder when it's loaded, okay? Now bear in mind the only time black powder and the pistol come anywhere near each other is on the range. Okay? So you want a set of brass tools, really, for dealing with mishaps on the range. Obviously, when you get it home, when you're cleaning, this black powder is miles away from the gun. Use what you have to do. Okay? I'll come to basic cleaning and maintenance in a minute. Right. Uh, as I say, the only time the gun and the black powder come together, or anywhere near contact, is on the range. Okay. And it says here, never attempt to fire damp powder near naked flames. You may <laughs> laugh, but believe me, it has been tried. Right, okay. Now, then we come to the actual guns. There's infinite variety of them. And uh, here we have two examples. This is the Colt type. And you'll notice the difference between the Colt type and the Remington type is that the Colt type does not have a top strap. 
okay? Some people say that this is inherently a weak design. I've yet to see one going off, but you can see their point. The whole thing chamfers on this bit here. Okay, this is the basic one which has a wedge hold, holding pin. And also, you'll notice on the cylinder, it has no intermediate position for the hammer to drop into a safe position, okay? So the only safe place for this when it is loaded and not being actually fired is on half cock. Mm -hmm. The half cock position will give you free rotation of the cylinder, okay? Half cock, free rotation. As soon as you've got a full cock, you can't, and as soon as the hammer downs, you can't, oh. okay? Now, some of them have got little pins, aren't they, in between, so you can half cock, you can safe it on the pin. Uh, you, you can, no, the, the hammer wasn't. will not go down on, on no. it, it will, but look, see what can yeah, happen. Yeah, no, they okay, got so pins. it's not safe, except on half. I don't know, it might be the later model. Okay. Anyway, so, that is the safe position, if you haven't got a notch down. If you have, get the hammer, get a good grip on the hammer, pull it back, trigger back, use that, and ease the hammer down into that safe notch position and then that is safe obviously pointing down range not like that but this is for demonstration okay mm. happy with that okay mm. right now then to strip they couldn't be more easy let me just do a quick strip here i'll do the old army because the old army is very popular for obvious reasons it's a cheap gun for what it is it's very accurate it's got the back sights okay it's not a replica of anything it's a modern derivative of these originals and if you're going to do any serious shooting at all you do need something with a backside the backside on here at full cock there's a notch in the back hammer now, so, this one's quite tight but some of them you can get hold of that hammer and waggle it you're never going to do any serious shooting with that it's going to be a bit of fun but that's all it's ever going to be okay so if you want to do any serious shooting the old mum is your man okay to strip Half a turn on that, okay, spring loaded, you with me? Yeah. Drop the rammer and just slide the whole lot out, okay? Half cock, and that cylinder drops out. That is it, it's so easy. But I will do one more thing. I will take the grips off to show you how the spring works. Again, be very careful with this bolt. They're so hard to control the size, and if you lose it, you could be in sh look. How's that for basic? See what happens? Mm. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. It's so simple that it's beautiful. Okay, that's it. Mm. So easy. You, you, I find these grips are very small for my bloody great fists, and you can you can get specialized yeah, grips. Flat under, don't yeah, that's right. It'll go down. Okay, but be careful, these screw bolts that I'm screwing home now are difficult to get hold of. Okay? The cylinder is different from a normal revolver, which you're used to, because you can't slide the cartridges in from the back. Instead, it's blanked off, and it's replaced by a nipple. You have a nipple wrench, and that's the nipple. You can see daylight through there, it's quite a big hole. Okay? There she is. Over that nipple goes the cap. That gap is uh, that uh, gap is fairly small, but it's, it's designed that way because the hammer, when it's closed over the cap, and the cap goes bang and ignites the main powder charge, that hammer has to hold that over against the pressure, the back pressure of the charge going off. Okay. Do you have a prick of that? Yes. The old hat pin, very essential tool. Okay. Some caps leave a lot of compound behind and it blocks up the old Do you do that every time? No, because you can hold it up and see daylight. If you can see daylight, you don't have it. Okay? If you don't see daylight, granny's hat pin, where you go, just give it a quick bougie out. Okay. And that's it. Now, to get this back in again, all these links, no screws, they just drop out, see? Get assembly your linkage dry like that. Okay, drop the cylinder in. Generally, you have to go from one top and then you have to, the jiggling starts that in there. Got, you see see what happens I haven't got that linkage in there now I have in she goes jiggle it right get the rammer in 
little bit fiddly, especially with all that. It's just she's all the way in. Close that. And don't forget that half turn. Click. Okay. Half cock, full rotation, wrap. Okay? Easy, isn't it? Couldn't be easier. And to clean it, all I do is do what I've done now. Okay, take all the nipples out. Stand the cylinder up like that, pull the, put one nipple in each cylinder, put the plug in the sink. Put the plug in the no, sink. No, right. No, no, no. Kettle full of plug in water, pour it all over. Pull that water drain off the draining board down at the sink. It's foul, it stinks, but it's the best way. Get, you get this kettle, pour the boiling water all over everywhere after you've taken the grips off. You'll need a cloth because it's, it's very hot. Okay? 90% of the fouler you can flush it away. Okay, mm. then you get your black powder solvent and you clean off all the bits with a toothbrush. Kind of toothbrush, yeah. And the phosphate runs up there, dips in it, get it all nice and clean. And that's how you take care of it. It's not the chore that some people think it is. Right, that's how I digress. <laughs> now, why do, okay. you put, why do you put the plug in the sink for? If you lose these nipples, <laughs> which will go down the thing, right? You, you've got to take the U-bend off. That's a sticky, smelly business, right? Right, these nipples must be screwed right home, okay? They are designed with a certain length of thread which will not blow back if it's seated properly. If you don't seat it properly, there is a danger of blowing back. But, you will also have difficulty revolving. Make just one. They are not cross-threaded and they're all the way home. Because when it goes bang, okay, this hammer against that spring is holding the whole assembly down. Okay, it's designed to hold it down with the full thread of the nipple in there. Okay, you don't want this hammer blowing back. You just flying back in your eyes, do you? Okay, so that's it. Right. All right, on the nipples go the caps. Might be obvious, but there is no substitute for a good cap. Oh, great misfires fanning about trying to get the bloody things off. Invest in some good caps, people. Don't be fobbed off with a cheap Italian one. What you, what I mean by a good cap is when you put it over there, it seats nice and firmly. It doesn't fall off when you talk. Okay. When it's being fired, it splits nicely so that you can just flick it off. You can always tell you who's going. Look, see, see all the markers and scratches. That that comes with a gun. Any gun, you've all got it. But people have had to scratch the uh, caps off, okay? Duff caps together, throw them away. Next time you're on the ferry here, my other side, they're useless. Okay. <laughs> You'll sell for now. Very quickly. Right. I've dealt exclusively so far with the cap and ball revolver. There are obviously single shot percussion ones and flintlock ones. Eventually people will get it because it's a lot of fun not getting into it. It's like you want a bigger and better boat. They will come. I, I'll, I will be one of the first to invest in one. I can assure you I'm going to have a go. It's, uh, it's fun. I did it in the States and it's a lot of fun. Now, the one difference between a cap and ball revolver and a single shot pistol is that you can look and see it is unloaded. You cannot do that with a single shot, all right? So we have a little trick. Again, it's so simple, it's unbelievable. You get a piece of dowel, right? A piece of dowel, which, when you drop it down on an unloaded gun, you mark it. That's on a single shot. On a single shot. Okay. Anything above that mark, you can paint green if you want. Anything below that mark, you can paint red. If you see any red there, the gun is not empty. It's as simple as that. Now, you have one dowel per gun and you identify it so that dowel goes with that gun. If you get the wrong dowel <coughs> with the wrong gun, you can you can get a false read, all right? I'll just mention that because if any of you get single shots, you'll need that. That's the same reason that you notch your ramrod on a, on a, on a rifle or a pistol, okay? So you know how far down that load's gonna go, okay? If it doesn't reach the notch, you've got a gap. And the gap between powder and ball and black powder is dangerous. Okay, because it will allow the pressure to build up beyond which it's not supposed to go. These guns are proof well high. Actually, these would probably take nitro, but don't. 
But what I'm saying is, if you get a single shot, you need a, you need a safety dowel, and you need to notch your ramrod so you know when the line is. We're all clear on that point. If any of you are going for single shots, I'll be quite happy to take you to one side and get you familiar with them. Okay. Right. You, you, there, there are other ways of telling whether a single shot is empty or not. You could shine a light through the nipple hole or the touch hole, and you might be able to see some. But uh, the old, the old thingy is is uh, the old dowel is is the best and easiest. Right. Now there's an infinite variety of ways of loading a black powder pistol. The way I'm going to show you now is the way you will do it on the right. Some people, half not remember. You all start with a gun in this position for obvious reasons. If it's anywhere like that, in fact, right, right. Some people load every single chamber first with, with the powder, ball. and then they go around with ball. Oh. That's all very well, but what happens in the middle of a loading process? The RO says, "Right, down with the stuff." There's powder everywhere. It's a bloody shambles, right? So, this is what you do. You drop the rammer, okay? That's the first chamber, and you load that completely. In goes the powder, okay, from the flask. In goes the ball. Remember, you can't go back on this. So, if you go past the point of no return, you, you, you have to drop the whole cylinder and out again. So, that gets dropped in. Powder, ball on top. Lift that up. Ram it home. Okay, ram the load home. Does it go? It will stop because of that. Yeah. So you might get a little gap if you've got a tiny chance, but 20 grains in, in there is fine. And it then, close? Yeah, oh yeah. Mm. I'll, we'll come, you'll, do the, you'll do the loading process yourself in a minute. Leave it in there. Then the, the next level. powder, powder ball, ball, same thing. Again. Ram, leave it down. All right. So at any stage in the proceedings, you can put that gun down and there's a ball on top of the load and it's safe. Because we have to grease this, there's grease all over here, and the powder can stick to the grease if it's not And there could be powder everywhere, and, and you get radial flashes out there, and you could get all sorts of pyrotechnics. So what you do, is you do one chamber at a time. Don't let anybody tell you anything. Okay? That's the way, you get that point from the start, and as I say, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Right. Uh, right. Okay, well, let's let's start loading. Before I go any further, it is perfectly safe to load and to put the ball on a capper ball revolver like this. The danger comes when you cap, okay? So you you will you can load um, with people around you like this, and it's perfectly safe. But you don't put the caps on with the powder. You on you them. never <coughs> cap the revolver <coughs> until you're ready to shoot, and the RCO gives you. He will give you the order to cap. And what okay. happens to that? That class will go to the rear. He will say, load. Everybody loads. Have you completed the loading process? Yes. Powder flask to the rear. Flask to the rear. Then you start to cap and then you'll shoot. It's a bit involved, but it's necessary. Okay, I'll come to the procedures in a minute, but now we're going to deal exclusively with the loading process. Now, if you're left-handed or right-handed, Depends on if you're right-handed, you hold a flask in your right hand. The gun you hold upright like that in that position, as we've said. Now you all saw me saw me how I loaded the flask. Open the flask. Normally you have to keep your thumb on it. Okay. Put your finger over the top. Shake down the neck full. Close that so that the powder doesn't go back into the flask. And have a look. There you see you've got a full neck. Mm. If you haven't got a full neck. Open that, okay. it'll shut down and do it. Okay? Shake it down, close, up, check visually. Fine. Okay, in she goes. Pull it in. And you can see there it is. Now the ball comes next. There's several types of projectiles you can use in here. Conical bullet, blah 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 blah. Believe me, the most accurate is the ball. Now I cast my own. And because they're cast, you'll see that there is a sprue on the top. Okay? Mm. This sprue is always on the top, like that. Don't put it to the side, two reasons. If you put it to the side, when you ram it, you won't get a nice seal. Because it's not round. Yeah. Also, 
because this is a rifle weapon you want that sprue which which would put a bias on the ball on the center line of the rifling more accurate mm. two reasons accuracy and seal so now we, we move lift the rammer move that round now the rammer base is con is um, concave so it will sit on the ball like that see mm -hmm. okay mm. ram that down one stroke okay it's I've got less powder than the maximum so the, what's has stopped me is the rammer coming against there mm -hmm. okay could you Leave. still have a gap then between the ball and the powder since the rammer comes a tiny out. one not not significant in this guy okay Remember I said, leave that down. Is that a low charge, 20? No, it's about the recommended. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was about the thing 30. with black powder is, if you overcharge, which you can, you, you can put more than that in here because you've still got room. You're There's no point because it is a very wow. slow burning powder. I mean, all right, it goes bang and a woof, you know. What I'm saying, slow burning compared with nitro powders. So you've got a, an optimum amount of load in here, which will actually consume itself and, and and convert to gas anything more than that you're just throwing un, unburnt powder out the front waste of time waste mm. of powder okay. right again open up the place put your finger over shake down the neck full close it always have a look full neck in she goes tap 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 ball sprue up okay and <coughs> Ram, bang. Now, I'm going to cheat a bit here. I want you to see these little bits of metal that are coming off here. See these nice rings? See that? There's two of them because we've loaded two balls. That is what you want to see. That tiny little sliver of lead there, see it? Almost a perfect ring. That means that this is absolutely spot on calibre for this. It means that the ball's going in there. It's a tight fit in the cylinder. Okay? There's no room between the ball and the cylinder walls for a flash over okay that's what you want to see they can be a bit of a pain in the neck so when you've loaded all six just um, make sure that those are clear and that you don't so that you, you won't um, they won't foul up the rotation of the cylinder right carry on the loading process who wants to go joy yeah all right molded <laughs> it's not it's not hardened in any way that's what you want. You. The church is leaked. You leave anything you will. Okay, I, I cast my arm, but you can buy them. Okay. I'll tell you what, it's that's cheap off the yeah. church yeah. 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 Five, Eight five, pound five, five, yeah. you, I, I, that, Why do you think I cast my arm? Yeah, I, I, I could but see me that, be doing I'll, it. I'll I mean, let, me, let me deal with this yeah. first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, there's two reasons you, you, you use a battery. One is to lube the thing, and the other is to reduce the effects of the fouling. You could do a whole morning shooting without even cleaning the gun, okay? Mm. Which you can't do with a rifle or anything like that. So what you do, I use Vaseline, you can use any sort of grease really. Just fill up the chamber, like that, okay? Just, there's a bit of <coughs> just, just fill the, the chamber up flush, so that there's no gaps. Okay, this is lubing and to stop a multiple ignition, stop the flash Sorry. over. Okay, you with me? Uh, uh, what do they call it? Obturation or something, is it? The, the, uh, there's no doubt it's a fancy. Obturation. Oh, was it? There's a word. Yeah, it means something to uh, it. Obturation or something. Now, the most important tool well, when you're dealing with black powder is a good cloth. <laughs> okay? It's seriously. For the potter's war figure. Yeah. Seriously, because <laughs> if you dealing with grease like this, grease and lubricant and if you've got it all over your hands you could lose the grip, grip on the gun couldn't you? <coughs> you don't want to do that. So at this stage out comes the old uh, <laughs> an old t-shirt okay just just wipe the spare off no matter about that and that's it ready to go okay apart from the capping up so you're all happy with that okay any questions so far okay so basically You've seen what we need. We can get rid of this thing now. Okay, this is non-standard. This is a club gun, but it's going to get traded in for something else. It's non-standard. That's like mine. Right. Back That's to what mine. What non-standard? Bull, right? Yeah. They're all nominally 44s. The ball for that, if you slug the ball, and Mike would be 451. Yeah. This one, 456, 457. Okay, and the ball, the, the mould is marked 458. 
which is where you get your little mm. one foul sliver from. Okay, so if you buy a gun, you've got to be very careful that you you get one which you can get the proper balls for. Yeah. Yeah, if, you've got, if you've got a 44, and there's a lot of 44 and different things, mm. they're, all, they're all classified you all as 44, they're not. Make sure that the ball goes to that pitch. Yes. Do yeah. 44 yeah. Balls go you can have a 44 balls. Remington and a 44 Old Army. The Old Army ball, you need a 458. Uh -huh. The Remington, you need a 451. A 7,000 difference. Okay? So, you, you could put a Remington More ball Remington. in here. <laughs> Mm. That's why I'm saying look for that. Mm. If you see that, you know you're spot on. If it's much more than that, you won't be able to ram the damn thing. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm right, so okay. a short barrel. <laughs> now, don't forget, um, as I said, I'll re stress this your, your flask. Find out the load that you need. For an old army, it's about 20 grains of black powder. I don't know about paradox, you'd have to find that. And you get a neck which will fill 20 grains. Mm. Don't guesstimate. No. It ain't worth it. No, you can't say the same. You, you use Pyrodex. Yes, you can buy them readily, and also you get some flasks with an adjustable nozzle. Yeah. Adjustable nozzle. Oh. You can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Red vault. Right. Uh, too much powder is useless. Okay, I'll turn that down. All goes in sprue up. Yeah. Explain why we look for the sliver of red lead, yeah, we've done that. Yeah, till on the firing point, ready to shoot, and only on the arsenal is over. Okay? Mm. I think we've all taken that. It, it, is right. it possible to, to have, say, a table back there where you do all the black powder, and keep this area free for just caps and that? Yeah, what we, we decided in the committee we could either do it that way, or have everybody loading here and then put the caps back. Because of the powder back. In, yeah, the powder back, sorry. In, 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 because of the inherent chaos which would uh, result if people are milling around everywhere, stuffing powder down here and that, we decided to do it this way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If, in the light of experience, we find it's impractical or we could do it better, then we will change the rules. I sometimes get a delayed ignition accompanied by a fizzing noise. Okay? With damp powder you can get this. If you hear that, keep it on aim, safe, because eventually it could well go <coughs> and it'll go off. It'll, it'll be a long-winded process, okay? Normally, if you follow the rules, powder dry and, and, and not too freezing, frigid, decent caps, clean and dry the gun out before you come on the range, you shouldn't have any problem. Right, now this next point I'm going to emphasise over and over and over again. If you get a misfire, what did you do with the old revolver? You can't attend and cocked it and away you went. Never ever cock the gun after a misfire. Because immediately you're putting the dangerous chamber out of line with the barrel. So if it does go bang, it's going to go bang down the side of your gun, it's going to shave lead everywhere, it's going to be putting your hand at risk and everything. So if you get a misfire, leave the hammer down. These are all single action guns, okay? You leave the hammer down. That duff chamber is still out of line with the barrel. If it eventually goes bang, Fun, okay, it's safe. Okay, you can't ten. Okay, That's if it has, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it hasn't gone bang by then, carry on, cock up and go. Now you don't try and deal with that duff cylinder at the time. Fire all the rest off, because if you've only got one duff chamber, the, the cylinder to deal with in your chamber, uh, one chamber in the cylinder, that's better than having three or four. Okay, so that's how you do it. You get a duff one, the cap goes off but the charge doesn't. Keep it pointing safe. Doesn't matter if it's in here, but not up there, you know. It preferably into the back. And you have to count to ten you yourself. Have to cock it, do you? No, not don't cock it while you're doing that. You mustn't cock no, it. No, yeah. no, when you when you go to fire, yeah. you have to cock it manually. Yes, single action only, yeah. please. Yeah. Oh, They've never come up with a double action. Uh, black powder revolver for that very reason. It's too easy just to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not so. Okay. So everybody take that point on board. Do not copy. Do no. Do I'm not. Until you've counted ten and you've done your ring roll. Okay. Right. He says uh, if you do and the load goes off, it could blow the cap off the nipple because there's not the hammer is not holding it. Mm. You could get debris back in your face. You see. Going back. Mm. If you have a a hang fire. Yeah. Do you report it then? Or just no. carry on and afterwards. You, they're, they're too frequent. Oh. So you carry on firing. Yeah. 
after then counting. I'll come to that in a minute what you what you do okay oh, right. yeah, okay. yeah yeah okay. yeah okay. right if you do cock and that cylinder is out of line if it does go bang it will blow the cap off the back and guess where your eye is Ooh. all right Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. because yeah. this is designed to have the pressure of that hammer holding the cap in you've seen how tiny the hole is it's, it's, it's specifically designed to allow that spurt of flame to ignite the black powder but to be small enough not to allow too much pressure to come back more than the spring on this hammer can cope with so I think I've made the point there do not cock <laughs> okay then you count slowly to 10 keeping the gun pointed down and safely down the range okay and then if it hasn't gone off then we come to the dealing with the misfire you attempt to shoot all the remaining loads in the cylinder after carrying out the above procedure. In other words, the 10. Now, get rid of them. Then and only then deal with the misfires. Use the hat pin to clear the nipple hole, okay? Recap or reprime if it's a flintlock, okay? And then, come on, I'll fire it. Nine times out of ten, it'll go off. It's, it's just one of those things. You occasionally need a bit of persuading to go off but uh, nine times out of ten you'll go. If, after three attempts, the load still fails to go off, then you've got to draw the load. Okay, it gets complicated. At this stage, you inform the RCO, okay? And then the RCO will help you with the procedure. But basically, there's two ways of drawing the load on these. Okay, you, you, you get the duff one there, and you take the nipple, nipple off, okay? I... I would keep the cylinder in the gun if you can at this stage. It's safer that way, because you know which way it's pointing. Take the nipple off, okay, with the nipple wrench. You should be able to do that, okay? If you can't, then you have to take the cylinder off. With this off, the hole's quite big, and you should be able to get the black powder to trickle. Okay. Then you get a little brass rod, and uh, with a hammer, and you drift the ball, the ball out the front. It's that easy, okay? I keep a little squirty water bottle with me, and once I've let the powder trickle, I'll give it a good squirting. Soak the powder, doubly safe, okay? And you need a brass, a small brass rod. But you wouldn't be able to use it, would you, again? If no, the bullet, the bullet's all shot the buggery, but then... No, what I mean, oh yeah, just, yeah. Dry it anyway. No, it's easy, just dry it off. Dry it off. 4 2 dry it all off, and away you go. Easy, yeah, yeah. If you have a single shot okay or or you can't get that then you do it the hard way with a worm now a worm is just a threaded piece there with a brass collet the brass collet corresponds to the caliber of the gun that's for 36 that's for 44 that's for various other ones okay and that screws onto a rod and you down the barrel this this collet here makes sure that that thread engages the ball centrally and doesn't drift off to one side. You with me? Mm -hmm. And you screw it in, remember it's soft lead, you screw it in, and then keep pulling it till you can, till you're not gonna pull the thread through the thing and then you can draw the ball that way, okay? Where do they come Bearing from, in so mind that the more you screw into this, the more you're expanding the ball mm. to, to the mm. side. Mm. So you have to sort of get a, a sort of happy medium, mm. okay? Get yeah, okay. Mm. These, by the way, are spare flints for the flinters. That's, that's the worm, the dreaded worm. That is an essential tool if you're gonna get a single shot. Okay, you can get away without one for here, but if you if you get a single shot, you really do need one of those because there will come a time when the bloody load which will not go off. And that's it. Okay, so you'll need them. Just be aware that these are around. Okay, that's the worm. Okie dokie. Right. At no time when you have misfires do you put your hands forward of the cylinders. That might be stating the obvious, but if you've got them behind, it's safe. Okay. Whatever you've got powder and ball in there, then these fingers are to the rear for obvious reasons. If you've ever seen one of these fired at night, you see you get a massive radial flash out of here. And obviously the muzzle flash. And then the sparks bouncing around the deck everywhere. It's quite spectacular. Okay. But if you saw this fire at night, you would not put your fingers forward in it. So just take my word, never ever fingers forward the cylinders when you've got powder on it. Okay? Yeah.
Right. And if you go into the NRA, NRA armour thing at Bisley, you will see one that's had a flash over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and there's nothing left there with the cylinders. <laughs> Alright, so if you, first of all, if you've got one, it is not going to go off. Alright, raise your hand, get the RCO's attention, then we'll go through the procedure. Okay. If you can get the nipple off with the cylinder still in the gun, so much better. If not, get the cylinder out and be, be, be very careful because it's still potentially dangerous. The first thing you have to do is get the cap off that you've tried. If it hasn't gone off the cap, don't get pliers. This happened to me. I got some pliers. A bloody thing wouldn't come off. I remember you said about wretched caps. Mm. Those, those have gone. They've thrown in the bloody soul. I got my pliers. I followed all the rules. I was pointing it down the range. I didn't have my fingers forward. And I was tugging it. And bang, it went off. And it did. It went off. It was, it I was so lucky. It missed everything down there. Okay. And it went into the deck about there. It frightened the crap out of me. And it frightened the crap out of Steve. But nobody got hurt because we followed the rules. Okay. It can happen. Okay. So always, if in doubt, that's, that's the business. It's so natural to put it around it and, and hammer it again, isn't it? Because you're so used to doing it. Yeah. If you use a rod to drift that out, be careful you don't damage the threads on the nipples, all right? Yeah. Or, or the Is there a, is there a special thread. tool to take them off? Uh, you, it, uh, I think at Hurst it gets brass rod, but you'd have to take the cylinder and say, can I... you are probably looking about eight brass, aren't Yeah, you? whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Might have some down at work. Ah, ah well, get some, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd all say that. How long, how long do you want it? You know, if it's about that long. <laughs> a 2-2 two, a two, two pistol rod will not go through there. Right. No. We tried it once, oh. the only thing that would go through was this, and of course, look at the head, it's no good. Mm. All it did was slice the ball up into... <laughs> we got it out eventually, we got beating it and mm. belting it. And, but, <laughs> if you've got a nice bit of round... Right. Oh. Now, Donation to the company. While we're on the subject of misfires and this, that and the other, with single shot pistols... <laughs> a single shot pistol, to draw the load, you've got to go through all this business. And to draw a load back that you've rammed, through a fouled up barrel is a pain in the neck. It, believe me, I've done it in the States mm. and it's, it's, it, ooh. When, you, when that ball finally comes out, you think, oh God, thank Christ for that. Mm. With a single shot pistol, I would highly recommend a quick swab after every shot mm. with the 4B2 on the rod, just down and get that fouling off. Or either that or use Minibol? a wad like that. <coughs> Bit of spit patch, okay? But don't let the don't let that come into contact with the black powder, otherwise it won't go bang. Okay, just on the sides, and as you as you ram that down, as you, you put the black powder on, you put the wad on, push the wad down, with the spit patch on the sides, and it clears the foul as it goes down, and then the ball on top of that. Or you could use a patch, which is a cotton linen patch, whatever. You put that over the muzzle after the black powder's gone down, and put the ball on, and it goes down with the patch. Okay, first bits of pitting rust okay when you get home put the kettle on remember i said that mm. not for a cup of tea <laughs> strip her down like i said grips off and pour pour the boiling water all over everything the reason we use boiling water is you can do this with a blue gun as well it gets this the gun so hot that any spots of water left on will evaporate off mm. so you're left with the gun dry okay <coughs> Pour the boiling water everywhere, get rid of the fouling. Remember I said take the cylinder off and the nipples off. Stand the cylinder upright with the, the chamber mouths upright. Drop one in in each one. And as you pour the boiling water around, those nipples bounce around and it gets the, the guns right. Okay, then and only then you get your black powder solvent and your toothbrush. Okay, you brush off all the black fouling. And then oil up everything, reassemble the gun, and there we go. The ball, all you need to do is dip it in the black powder solvent with a phosphor bronze, give it a good scrubbing out, okay, and then uh, flush it all again with the remainder of the boiling kettle. And it's that easy, you don't have to make a choice. It does stick, it does stick a bit, but that's it. I'm reading something that says when you finish shooting, put WD-40 everywhere. Well, that's a silicon, that's silicon based and that couldn't cause more trouble than it's worth because what it will do is seal in the fouling. I would say, don't do any of that, no. no. It's not going to be left long enough to do no. if you do it. Once you get home that yeah. evening, okay, don't leave it overnight. Just do that routine. And if, if you can't see any fouling, 
Which is one of the reasons that you get stainless steel. Then you know it's okay, the family's gone. It's a bit more difficult to spot with a blue one. But there's nothing stainless wrong steel. with blue guns, they're all right. Okay, and, and the old toothbrush, when your, when your toothbrush is too soft and soggy to use anymore, keep it. <coughs> there's the nipples, all right? <coughs> make, make sure you, you, the threads are all clean. It's a bit thin, but you can do it. And again, make sure the plug's in the sink. They'll be careful, they? In the sink. <laughs> yeah. That's quite a good one. Yes. Is that yeah. one of that those? You can buy that of a... Yeah, you, know. you get them at Boots. Yeah. Mm. They're also very good for two, two self-loading rifles to get round the... Mm. We've got an electric one, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> right, that's really. so sad over uh, it. You've done quite a new today, but it's a little bit sort of... <laughs> Right, we, we've now come to the last bit before we actually get going, and that is preparing the gun for use. Right, you've cleaned it, you've oiled it up, you've stowed it away in your safe, and then what have you got? You've got a bloody great oiled up gun, so you do the reverse process. Okay, take the cylinder out, leave the nipples in if you want. Okay, in this occasion, because the nipples will have oil around them, that's nice, that's okay. Um, just pour boiling water in through the nipples, all right, hold it up to the light, <laughs> blow it out. 4x2, just dry it out. Nice and hot. <coughs> Same with the barrel, just flush the barrel out with oil. You mean okay. they don't want to clean your barrel? Is it hot water, water before you cut? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hot water clears all the oil out. Oh. Quick wire Didn't out. Didn't you do that the day before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's ready to go. Right, any questions? Do you, do you have to... Uh, to load with caps in your nice warm dining room at oh. home, push against that spring to expose that there. You drop them in the right way round. Okay, and then you push them up and it engages in that little there. Uh, and then you put that over there, keeping it down the range. And that's it capped. Now always give it a little push. Firmly seat it. Alright, what am I doing wrong? You've got your fingers over exactly. there. Exactly. Okay, my deliberate mistake. Keep your fingers to the rear of those cylinders, okay? You can only rotate one way. Push that till it clicks Do into you pull it off? Yeah, well, no, no, pull it to the side. Push it on, and then just move that to the side, like that. Mm. And then push it on. Okay, you can have a go, Joy, but... That was quite good. Yes, yeah, not bad, is it? That did not And you loaded that? No, it's, it's a more of a push. It's not no. a crack, it's not... <laughs> now, don't forget this single action, you will have to cock. Okay, you see we've loaded it properly nice. Got another shot. And the next two hasn't fired yet. Hello, Right, okay. Right. And there is Frankie. Young Pete, are you ready? He's half a mark, half a sleep there. Oh, we've done it. Last year, I won I won the horn thing with Dave. Oh, for his gun. And he's probably given his wallet before. Go on then. That was the empty cylinder, sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two haven't gone off, so.